3 million documents have arrived. Let's dive in. My friends, if you thought we would go a week without talking about the Xbox $70 billion Activision transaction, you would have lost that bet because just this week, 3 million documents. I don't know about you guys, but 3 million documents is an absurd amount of documents. I get upset when there's like eight unread emails in my inbox, but 3 million documents related to Sony, Xbox, Microsoft, Activision, UK, the CMA have, have basically been dumped onto the market. And so this was expected because obviously when you go to court and these things are very public, we get to see Sony's side of the argument now from the flesh and blood of the actual documentation of what they filed in the courts. And while there's a lot to go through, you know, about 3 million documents, there is some things we can pull out that really just kind of show that Sony is just digging its claws into arguments that don't maybe hold a lot of validity. And it just kind of shows that they're going to do whatever it takes. It doesn't really matter to try to block this transaction. So let's dive into some of the documents here. And we've got, we've got quite a few. So this first document here really talks about the 10 year deal that Microsoft has been, I shouldn't say supposedly, but has been offering to Sony. Now, keep in mind that Nintendo has already signed and they are, they're doing this deal to keep in mind too, that Nvidia has also signed a similar deal on on the gaming side for PC when it comes to their streaming service. So what is this first little bit of information? It says Sony can put any Call of Duty game on their subscription service. So if there was any fear that Call of Duty would only be allowed on Xbox Game Pass and then you'd have to buy it outright on Sony, nope, that is not true. Microsoft is saying you can put any Call of Duty game on their platform. Interestingly though, Sony says that by being able to do this, this might actually destroy their entire subscription platform. It just doesn't fit into the model that they are building out. And despite Microsoft saying you can do this, Sony's saying like, look, if we do this, it's gonna destroy our business model. I don't, I, that one's a little bit tough to swallow, but maybe because they never intend to do day one game offerings like they do on Game Pass. So maybe, maybe that's their bent or they just really just wanna say it's gonna destroy it because we don't really care. And there's going to be pricing parity. And so Microsoft is coming out and saying, look, we are not going to jack out the price only for PlayStation users. It's pricing parity. You can put it on your subscription service. It's going to be there. And yeah, and Sony, Sony's not too happy about it. Sony doesn't really buy that one too much. So moving on to the next one here. Ooh, uh, this one is the most hilarious of all the ones, I, I think, of all the concerns, but I guess maybe there's some validity to it as well. So what Sony is saying here, and you can read this whole thing, is that they believe Microsoft could intentionally introduce bugs into Call of Duty and just make it uh, just a buggy experience so they could degrade the experience and not take any, they'd find a bug and take their time and Microsoft is not going to do the right thing and, and put a good game out and do the best that they can to make it feature complete with Xbox because Xbox will be the bug free version. I, the one like glaringly obvious thing about this, because you could say that, yeah, Microsoft could be slow to patch the version on PlayStation 5. They could do that. That, that is something that is, there is some valid concerns there. However, you have to remember that Microsoft is in the business of making money. And if they put out terrible games on PlayStation, which as we all know is the market leader in console, uh, they're gonna lose money. Microsoft has, Microsoft's on the hook for making back $70 billion to their shareholders. They have to go to the shareholders, look them in the eyes and say, we will make back more than $70 billion with this transaction at some point. So if they just totally pooch it on the PlayStation 5, that is really going to destroy that narrative. And again, keep in mind, Microsoft wants to make money. The, the one overarching theme I think you can take away from all of Microsoft's court's documents is that they really just want to put their games everywhere and ev anywhere. They're not so much focused on the exclusivity factor with when it comes to Activision and Call of Duty. They want to go broad. They want to go wide because that's their best chance at actually taking some meaningful market share out, you know, away from Sony, because as of right now, their current strategy, while it works, it's not, it's not growing the product or the platform in any meaningful way. And so they're going to go broad and wide. And that is what I think you can really kind of pull out of this. So the other one, uh, other thing that has come out that is really kind of hilarious too, it says Sony comes out basically says Microsoft hasn't made any meaningful commitment to any of this. So this relates to their, uh, <laughs> 
their agreement that Brad Smith, not Brad Sams, please stop tagging me on Twitter. It's been zero days since I've been called Brad Smith, uh, is walking around with a contract for Sony that we believe, based on everything we've seen so far, that is for 10 years, allows them to put it on their subscription service, offers price parity, offers feature parity, and uh, a bug parity uh, probably at that point too. Um, but they basically said Microsoft has dragged their feet and only engaged when they thought that things were not going to go their way. But that that seems a little odd because if you think back, think back to when the Nintendo agreement started information coming out. And so you got to remember, too, that by the time it hits public, by the time Microsoft says, hey, we and Sony or we and Nintendo have signed an agreement, that has been ongoing conversation. That's not like they woke up on Tuesday and said, hey, to- hey Tony at Nintendo. I don't know if his name is Tony, uh, whoever their legal counsel is. We want to offer you a 10-year deal. And then on Wednesday, they sign and they're done. No, these things take weeks and time uh, for them to materialize. Same with NVIDIA. And so Sony's sitting here saying, eh, no, it's not really whatever. But I will tell you, my friends, the piece de resistance uh, of all of these conversations, this tweet right here from Lulu, it says, the CEO of SIE answered, and SIE meaning Sony Interactive Entertainment, answered the question in Brussels, in his words, I don't want a new Call of Duty deal, I just want to block your merger. Now, you might be saying, who is this random person quoting the CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment? Why would we want to listen to her? Well, my friends, she is the EVP of Corporate Affairs and CCO of Activision Blizzard. She would know exactly what is going on over there during these court battles. This is this is good information. Uh, you could probably maybe find it, those three million documents. It's a little tough to, to dig all this stuff out. Uh, but keep in mind that she is a reputable source and somebody who would know exactly what is going on. Now, to keep things moving along here, Microsoft isn't just sitting back on its heels trying to say, I hope the CMA really listens because the EU is, looks like it's going to greenlight it. We don't know what, officially what's going to happen with the FTC yet. But Microsoft has put out a full page ad in the UK. So this is on the Financial Times image credit. Credit to Tom Warren. He posted this up talking about Call of Duty for 150 more million players. That's a lot of more, a lot more people who are able to get access to Call of Duty because of this merger. Now, Microsoft is obviously going to be the person or the company that would bring this to market. And so they obviously are spinning it in their positive light. And, and there's no antitrust or any concerns here because 150 million more people will do this. But again, this shows that Microsoft is not leaning back saying, well, we'll just wait to see what the CMA will do. We'll steamroll. They are really going for that public perception steamrolling because they think they've got a good deal. And they think that this is something that can make a lot of sense. And they, they're, you know, they're giving it their best shot, I think is what we can take away at the end of the day this has just been a little bit of limelight a little bit of sunshine a little bit of light if you will on those three million documents i suspect a lot more is going to come out over the next few days as we understand how microsoft positioned itself how sony is positioning itself and what you should do is keep it subscribed here because the only bs on this channel is me